If you are a current Lightroom user, but you are confused by the more advanced tools inside Lightroom, in this video, I'm going to show you when and how to use radio filters to enhance your image. If you need to correct or fix just a part of your image and not have the adjustments apply to the entire image, then radio filters might just be the solution you're looking for. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. I've been teaching beginners and intermediate photographers like you how to improve their photography right from capture in the camera all the way through to the finished edited image. Let's get started. So the first thing you want to understand about the radio filter is when to use it. The edge vignette tool can only apply to the center of the image. You can't move it around. So if you want to affect something that's off center, this tool is not going to work for you. Likewise, if you're using the graduated filter, it can only apply from the edge in. So any of the edges into the center, but you can't apply it inside the middle of the image. So that's where the radio filter comes in. To open the radio filter and start using it, you can get to it by three different methods. The toolbar up on top here, now if you don't see that, make sure that if you have the histogram open, it should be right below the histogram. The radio filter is the second one from the right. The brush here, and then the radio filter is on the right. So just open it by clicking it, close it by clicking it again, or you can go to the tools menu at the top and choose radio filter. Now you'll notice here that you'll also see a keyboard shortcut to open any of these tools. And for this one, it's shift M. That is my preferred method of working because it allows me to work faster without having to use a lot of my mouse clicks. So I'm going to hit shift M to open it. Once the radio filter tool is open, you can now set the parameters and start by drawing one on your image. You'll notice that you get this little crosshair or it looks like a plus sign on your image. So to start, you just click and drag. Now you'll notice that as I do so, it changes the shape so I can make an oval or a circle. I'm just going to move that around and make it really dark so you can see what's happening. Okay, and you move it around just by grabbing the center dot or grabbing anywhere in the inside part. Another way to draw it is if you want a perfect circle, hold down the shift key. And then when you drag it out, you can only get a circle. It won't allow you to distort it. Okay. So once you get the shape that you want and the position that you want, you can also do things like stretch it. So if I decide I want it more oval, just grab one of the little dots and drag it. Okay. If you drag from one, it opens the oval from both sides. But if you only want to drag the bottom, for example, just click Alt Option, and then you can adjust the size from the bottom only. Now you'll notice that this is applying on the inside of the circle. And if you're not sure, you can turn on the mask or the overlay. The way to do that is just pressing O on your keyboard. It stands for overlay. Now mine is default or set to green, but there are other colors available. If you want to change the color, so maybe you're working on a landscape image and the green blends too much with your image, just hold the shift key down and press O again, and you'll see the different colors. Now it's white, black or, or gray, and red. I find that I use red or green most often depending on the content of the image. I just want it to be able to show up. I like green, and I'll show you why in a moment, because there's another red mask that applies here to this same filter. So now I can see that it is applying on the inside of my oval. So any of the adjustments that I do here will only apply to the inside of the oval. But what if I want it to apply to the outside? Then you just go over here where it says feather. I'll show you that one in a moment and click invert. Now you can see that it is applying where it's green or to the outside of the circle or oval. I'm going to put it back in the center. Next, I'm going to show you what feather does. It's set to 50 by default. So this is the amount of softness or fade that the radio filter with hat will have. If you go all the way down to zero, you can see that it becomes a perfect circle with a hard edge. Okay? If you go all the way to 100, it becomes a very soft edge and it fades very gradually. 
Right? So the black part in the center, because I'm darkening, is only black in the very small portion, and then it fades really gradually out to the edge of the circle. So it's fading from the pinpoint in the middle to the edge of the circle. I usually leave it at 50, which is the default, unless I find that I need more or less fade, and that will just depend on where you're placing your radio filter. I'm going to delete this one and just show you how I went from this image to the final image here. So I'm just going to turn on my radio filter so you can see when I did Shift M, now you can see that there's four dots here. Okay, so I've applied four different radio filters on this image. The first one on the skirt, I have lowered the highlights to make sure that I'm not getting any clipping in the bright areas. But I've also at the same time increased the whites a little bit just to keep the highlights nice and clean and lowered the blacks to keep nice contrast. But the main thing I wanted to do here was to increase the texture. So watch as I drag the texture slider up, you can see the folds in the dress and the tool become sharper and more crisp. So it allows me to really target that area as opposed to the entire image. Another one I've applied is inside the circle. And this one I've done brightening of the exposure and the whites and a little bit of clarity. Right? Now you'll notice that it's only applying on part of the image and I brushed it off some of the, the area. And I'll show you that in a moment because I didn't want it to apply to the front of the skirt because it was making the skirt too bright. Then I applied a darkening one to the outside. Unlike the post crop vignette in the effects tool, I can place this off center. So if she was more to the side, I could move it off to the side more. And finally, I did one to just bring up the shadows a little bit behind her. Okay, so if I turn these radio filters off, you can see what they are doing. Now the light is much more balanced overall on her. Let's take a look at the full before and after with the radio filters. Moving on to this next image of my ballerina. This is the before image and this is after. Now you'll notice quite a change and I'm going to show you how I did that without having to do any um, detailed masking myself. The tools inside the radio filter allow me to make those adjustments. So like the other image, I applied something to darken areas that were too bright. So I'm just going to draw an oval over this window. So I'm going to darken the highlights and the exposure. But you'll notice what's happening is that it's also affecting the wall and getting onto her arm and the door. So I don't want that. There's something built into the radio filter that allows you to do this without having to paint anything. And that is down at the bottom of the tool. So just scroll down until you see this range mask. Click it and choose luminance. What that means, it's going to mask the filter based on the brightness of the content inside the circle. So I only want it to apply to the brightest areas and this range down below here shows from shadows or dark on the left, just like the histogram, up to highlights or whites on the right. Remember I said there was a reason I was not using the red overlay? That's because this one here, when you check off this box, shows in red. So I want to keep them separate. So I want to know that I'm seeing the actual luminance mask as opposed to the overall mask of the whole tool. So in this case, I do not want this adjustment to apply to the dark areas. Now watch what happens to that red area as I drag it up from the left. So I'm actually removing this effect from the brightest areas. So you can see now that it's mostly just applying in the windows. You can also affect the smoothness. So if it's not blending really nice, you can try increasing the smoothness or if you want it to be a little harsher, in this case, better coverage of the window. I'm going to do it to the left. So now when I turn this off, you can see that it's really just applying to the windows, right? If I wanted to, I could even add some blue to make it look like it's more blue sky outside. So there's lots of things that you can do inside the filter or once you've applied it besides just exposure, right? As I mentioned on the skirt, I applied one that added some texture. The next thing I'm going to do is apply another radio filter here and I'm going to darken these bright areas. Right? 
one thing I forgot to mention is you can actually rotate this as well. So if you put your mouse um, or your whatever your tool you're using on the little dots on the corners, so uh, the four uh, directions, I guess, <laughs> the circle doesn't have corners, you'll see the thing to resize it. But if you have your mouse sort of just on the edge, if you click and drag there, you'll rotate it. So I want to affect sort of the bright areas on her skirt, on, in this doorway, and on the floor here. So I'm going to do it like that, okay? And then I'm going to do another luminance mask, same idea, so that I'm not affecting her leg or any of the dark areas. Okay. So now I can see, do I want it smoother? Like so. So turning the radio filters off and on, okay, you can see that I've actually taken the highlights down too much. So I'm going to bring those back up a little bit in the dress and let's go exposure instead. And maybe even move it this way a little bit to get more of this corner. That looks better. Now another thing you can do is you can duplicate a radio filter. So if you're happy with one, just hover over the dot, right click, and choose duplicate. Now it's a duplicate one. You can move it around, uh, resize it. I want to make it up, go up here. Okay, it's too big. I'm going to resize it to this one and put it in the upper portion of the doorway. Okay, so once again, I don't want it applying to her or her face. Option Alt to drag down. So I definitely want to get more of that doorway. You can actually even make it go off the image. Now see how it's actually bigger than my whole image? So once again, I'm checking my luminance mask and I don't want it applying to the darker areas, just to this doorway, like so. Okay, now I can apply one to her skirt to add texture as I did in the other image. Now, if you apply one, it's going to use the same settings that you did last time to remove that or just go back to zero, double click the word effect, and then you can start from scratch. So here I want to add texture and a little bit more white so that I bring those highlights up. Lastly, I want to brighten her face. So I'm going to put one on her face and there's actually a preset that comes with Lightroom. So you can just pull down the little menu and choose Dodge Face. I've actually edited this one because I find that the preset settings that come with it are a little bit flattening. So I'm going to increase the whites a little bit and the blacks as well as shadows and exposure. I also want to check to make sure that I'm not getting any clipping. So the J key on your keyboard will show any clipping. So I've got a little bit appearing on her face. So I could once again do a range mask and just remove it from those bright areas, which is her forehead. So see how it's now, I'm just gonna zoom in here. See how it's only applying to the dark areas and not to her face. Okay. I could go even a little farther and then just let's see what it looks like. So I toggled that little mask on and off to see what the overall image looks like and to double check the mask. All right, let's see how we're coming in terms of closeness. Getting there, except for the color, obvious color change that you may notice. The other thing I did was just added one large edge vignette. Okay, so I allowed it to darken, inverted it so it's on the outside around her, like so. So something like that. So we're getting close. Now I'm sure you're anxious to see how I changed the color of her shirt. So, so far I've been doing things like changing the exposure, anything that is in this panel here, when you open the radio filter, you can apply. So that's temperature, tint, exposure, contrast highlights, any of the uh, tone adjustments, texture clarity, dehaze, as well as you can lower saturation, increase or decrease sharpness, and so on. You can also even add a color by clicking this box. I'll show you that in a moment. So one more way to adjust the radio filter and how it applies, I'm just gonna do minus exposure so you can see it again for now. Go down to the range mask again, and this time we're going to choose color. Then you'll see this little eyedropper, and to get the color applied, you have to click it, and then click somewhere in the image 
on the color that you want to affect, in this case, her top. Okay, so you'll notice that once I clicked, now our mask is just applying to her top. Now I can choose different spots and see if it applies and looks any different. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I can also try playing with the amount and see if it gives me more or less of her top. I'm kind of missing a spot there. So I wanna get as close to getting her entire top as possible. Let's see how we're doing. That looks pretty good, except for that little bit on the waistband. So I'm gonna go with that. And then I could just hit escape and it gets me out of that adjustment. Okay, so you've noticed that I've darkened her top, but I can also shift the color. So down here under the hue slider, if I shift it this way, I can change the top, the color of her top completely. So I changed it to green, but we could also make it blue or pink or any other kind of color on this spectrum, okay? I can also choose a color here. So if I wanted to do, go with pink or green or blue, I can actually choose it here and the amount of saturation. Okay, so you have a few different options for correcting color. I can also go up into the temperature and tint sliders and affect it that way. Okay, so we could create something and then just desaturate it a little bit so she's got a blue top as opposed to a purple top. So that's how you use the color range mask. That one would work really well as well if you want to um, make another one and just affect her skin tone. So for example, if I wanted to apply it on this one instead of the luminance mask, let's take a look at how that works. I could apply the color and then just click on her skin tone. Now you can see that it's only applying to the skin tone, but the danger is it's still applying to the background. And you'll see that her hair is a similar color, so it's working on her hair as well. But if you don't want it on that background area, okay, the final way to edit your radio filter is with the brush. Okay, so now this is not the same as the adjustment brush. This is a brush that is part of the radio filter. So it allows you to adjust the radio filter by brushing in, so that's the A or the B brushes, or by erasing. So I'm gonna choose erase, and then just go back into the background here, and you'll notice that I have my green mask on so I can see where it's applying. Right? And now I've erased it from those spots. So you can see if I increase my exposure, it's really just affecting her skin tone. So another before and after, and you can see the difference that I've created with using the radial filters. Here's a few more examples of a before and after, also using radial filters. You can see here that I've used several to adjust the bright areas on the bedspread just to affect and bring some detail in there because they were extremely blown out. For and after. This is another image of the same ballerina where I used radio filters to bring the focus and attention more on her and to darken the background and the wall beside her. Final example, you can see without radio filters here and with radio filters on this one. Here you can see that I applied two radio filters. This one, which is darkening the background and also adding a bit of blue to it because I wanted the emphasis to be on her and make her warmer. So I allowed the background to go bluer, but I didn't want the blue affecting the area right around her where the flash was. So I used the brush tool to mask that area out. The other one is just brightening up her face and I could use the luminance tool there if I wanted to make sure it was not on the background as well. This does a really good job of highlighting her. So this goes back to the why to use radio filters. The idea is to really have your subject pop out of the image. So she does so here for two reasons. Number one, she's brighter than the background and now she's also warmer than the background. So the background has been cooled off using that radio filter. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let's take a look at how you can speed up your workflow using radio filters. So I already showed you how you can take one radio filter and copy it and use it in another place on the same image. 
but you can also take these settings and apply them to another image. So if you hit Command or Control C while you're in the Develop module, you can choose any of these settings to copy and paste to another image. So in this case, I'm just going to choose Local Adjustments. So if you've done any adjustments using the other two, the brush or the graduated filter, you can copy all of them at the same time. So I'm just gonna hit Copy. Then I'm gonna to go to another similar image and hit Paste. Now you'll notice a few things went awry here and we can take a look at the positioning of these filters first because she's in a different spot and her legs are in a different spot. So the first thing I wanna do is actually change the size of this one and move it around to be more on her. And the second thing you'll notice is that because I painted where her feet and arms were in the other one, that is applied here as well. So I'm just going to paint that part back in but it gets me really close really quickly. Okay, so I can paint that sky in. And if I want to make sure that I've got her leg covered, I wanna erase from the leg. So just switch from paint to erase. Make sure that she's not covering with green. And then move the other one, which was lightening up her. Okay, move that down. And I can see that I still have something else going on here. So I've got a second one. Okay, so this is where I've darkened. So let's just double check all your dots. Make sure you get all your dots and anywhere that you've adjusted or painted in the previous one will be copied and pasted as well. So you may need to just do a little bit of adjusting using the brush that is attached to the radio filter. Okay, so remember again, it's not the adjustment brush, not the same thing. Let me turn that off. Okay, so now really quickly, I copied and pasted those other ra radio filters onto this image and went from that to that, okay? It even almost looks like nighttime because the sky is so dark. One final part of your bonus tip is if you like any of the settings that you've done, for example, this one lowers the texture, lowers the clarity, lowers the sharpness, so it's actually sort of blurring that background, and adds blue to it, you can add that as a tool preset. So up at the top where that custom menu is, just go all the way down to the bottom and save it as a new preset. So I'm gonna call it blur and blue background because it's kind of doing that. Then if I wanna use those same settings on another image, I can just easily find it in this pull down menu alphabetically. Now I have some questions for you. I'd love to hear about your experience with using radio filters. Have you used them before? And if you haven't, are you gonna give them a try now? If you have used radio filters, did you pick up some new tips or tricks today that you didn't know before? Or do you know something that I didn't cover today? Let me know if there's something I missed. Please share your comments below the video. I'd love to hear your experience and what you learned. Click one of the videos on the screen now to learn more about how to use Lightroom tools like radio filters, graduated filters, and the adjustment brush. And for more training, tune into my weekly editing live stream where I process subscriber-submitted photos using my approach and my techniques. There's a link in the description below.